Hey everybody, hope y'all are doing well and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to some more Forge. We are just getting ready for the uh, early access Steam release, which is in three days. I am recording as of October 15th, uh, and all of it is happening on October 18th. I also had a comment from the last video. I believe it's releasing on mobile um, November 2nd, so it's about two weeks out. Um, and I believe there is a way to like pre-register for that and you'll actually get 10 packs, which is pretty sweet. I don't know if that's how it works on Steam, to be honest. So maybe if anyone knows that, hit, hit us up in the comments here. Um, but I, I really wanted to go over the economy uh, as it's fully rolled out. Um, I thought about reading the article, but I feel like I can cover it since I, I sort of know uh, how it works after they had released it. Um, and just can give kind of my thoughts as someone who played during most of the demo weekends and throughout the alpha for about a month um just kind of what you might want to be on the lookout for how you might want to optimize uh your gold and things like that uh, but also these crystals and these other crystals there's there's really a lot going on here um and i think it is going to be a little bit rougher for players that are that are new to the uh just new to warforge in general um so i'm going to do my best to walk us through some of the biggest changes uh, to the UI, to the store, uh, to the rewards track specifically. So we'll be going that over that today. So promise we will get some gameplay going pretty soon. Honestly, I think once everything's in full swing, um, I'm just going to be itching to, uh, you know, you start over in early access. I'll lose my whole collection, unfortunately. Um, but honestly, I'm kind of looking forward to just like starting from the beginning, knowing what I know now. Um, and maybe I'll try and get a video up on uh, just generally what builds I've liked. But honestly, the builds that I have from old videos, um, I grinded and grinded and I was missing cards so I didn't have the optimal build, but a lot of them felt pretty decent. Um, so feel free to go back and take a look at that if you're itching to look at some deck lists. But today we are covering kind of the economy and the broad strokes of when this game gets released, what am I supposed to do, what do I wanna go for? Um, and what's cool is that I think it's very individual based, which is great that you have a lot of agency to kind of choose what you want to do. Um, but I also kind of want to give some context so that you all feel like you're making an informed uh, decision. So, packs cost 150 gold. Um, it, it seems like right now what they're doing is they're having these different packages to buy gold with. Uh, they reduced it. I think packs used to be 200 gold, now they're 150. Um, and uh, I think that generally when you're opening boosters, right, because I opened so many during the alpha, um, you want to probably just focus one faction. Now, you don't have to, right? But generally when you open these all army packs, um, what ends up happening is you get, you know, you get one from one faction, two from another, maybe two from a, another one. And um, although you're, you're guaranteed, I think, to get at least a rare in every pack, you just with the way that you build these armies and you build these decks, um, you really just want to focus on a faction because um, you not only can you, you can do something with those duplicates. We'll talk about that. Um, but basically you want to just get as much of a dense collection for one deck as possible because there are a lot of cards that are clearly pretty weak. Um, and then there are a lot of cards that are very good. So you just, I, I would, my recommendation would be try and pick a um, faction that you really, really like, um, you know, maybe do a little research so it doesn't feel like you're, you're diving in without knowing. Um, and I would just focus if you're going to get packs on that. That's something I've said throughout the alpha. Um, and I will probably continue to say it because the RNG sort of works that way. So these are the different gold packs. Um, I think there probably will be some in game way to accumulate gold. I'm not entirely sure about that. Um, um, and if there isn't, then it's just up to you how much you want to pay for. I think these are on the pricier side, but, you know, let's say you really want to get started with a bang and have, you know, more than just your starter deck, which you will, you will have when you pick your faction in the beginning of the um, early release. Uh, I could totally get that. And, you know, you definitely the initial packs get you quite a way. But when you're trying to get those select, you know, last like five or ten um, sort of epic cards, legendary cards, stuff like that. 
uh, you're just, it's going to take a while to open them through packs. That, at least that was our experience during the alpha. Um, and then crystals we'll talk about once we get there. So, one way we can talk about crystals is when you get crystals and you get 50 crystals per uh, win in ranked currently. I think there's probably a similar system, if not the same, for draft. Although draft has been a little bit bugged, so I think, I think they're working on that. You can use those crystals to go into the store, and I imagine it's like once per week or something like that, um, and check, or maybe, oh, actually it's, sorry, the refresh is 13 hours, so it's daily. So it's, I would definitely encourage people to come in here, like, not necessarily hoard crystals, but definitely save some, um, and just keep checking the daily rewards. So like, here, Host of the Dead, um, is pr a pretty crazy legendary card for the Eldari, um, and I actually don't know if I have this card. I might not. But so, so here, right, um, whether you can get it through a wild card or if you just have a bunch of crystals lying around, you'll not only get um, this card, but you'll get 500, uh, I think it's like champion points, and we'll, we'll go over what that means. Um, so this, so they're not doing crafting. This is like the big message I would say. They're not doing crafting in the game. There is a sort of crafting mechanic. We'll talk about that. Um, but basically, you can use some of this auxiliary currency from, you know, farming games and, and getting some amount of crystals to fill out your collection. So maybe I'm missing armored support for my ultramarine deck, or maybe I'm missing, uh, well, Madrell Galen comes with the, the starter for... Um, the Eldar, so I probably wouldn't be missing that, but maybe Dark Oratory, you know, but give a dark pack to all friendly troops. I got to get out of the Mark of Chaos, because that's that's what it was previously. Um, so this is an interesting part of the not crafting, but sort of solution for them, which is getting the cards. And then obviously they've got some pretty sick cosmetics, um, really cool card backs. I love the card backs. That's one of my favorite things. Um, but also we've got some uh, cool little... Uh, border profile things in titles which honestly is pretty sick um don't really need to show you guys my collection uh, this is this honestly the same thing um in most of my videos i still have these you know first draft here and it's first draft blah 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 and then i sort of kept with those so let's get in to the meat of it we've got missions campaign and forge and we'll just take it all slow so everyone knows what the deal is so and they also, what's nice is they have these little reads, these little um, uh, books that you can read, right? So daily login bonus, not too much to explain here, right? You're going to get 100 crystals, um, which is, not, so every day you're getting 100 crystals. Maybe you throw that into some of those cards um, and maybe you use it another way. There's also the daily skulls um, and you get, uh, where is this? Is? Yeah, so get skulls in battle by damaging the enemy warlord. I believe it's you get a skull per 10 damage that you do to a warlord. That's the system that they engineered so that people don't like retreat or like uh, resign the match early. Um, so even if you lose, but you did 20 damage to a leader or potentially 30, right? But you, you couldn't quite close it out or something. You'll get these, these uh, skulls and the skulls are going to give you um, these, uh, I believe they're called champion points. Is that what it is? Yeah. Cha campaign points. Sorry. Um, and then missions are just, these will just kind of accumulate, they'll just like auto-populate. Um, and so when you clear one, they'll, they'll give you other ones. Um, and honestly, they're pretty easy to clear, these, these sort of daily quests, um, which they call missions in the game. Uh, and you get these campaign points, and obviously when we get to campaign, we'll figure out what that means. Um, but you can, uh, this goes over uh, the daily skulls, right? So if you get 100 skulls, you probably get quite a few of these uh, campaign points. So really the daily login bonus and the skulls and the crystals, basically the crystals and skulls are all tied into just playing slash winning the game. Um, you're just going to get currency that you can use. Um, and then uh, in four hours, I'll be able to collect this. Uh, only have a level, level five or level one chest where we get three random cards, 50 of the pink crystals and one of the black ones and i believe black has to do with drafting does it say again? currency used to attain access to draft mode with premium rewards right and then currency up uh, used to buy and upgrade individual cards reroll daily missions and other purposes yeah so that's that's a good explanation and obviously as you go up let's see what the, the 31 is 300 crystals two booster packs a random epic 
and 10 black crystals. So basically just by playing daily and over the course of the week, you're, you're just getting a lot of free stuff. Now, um, as a generally free to play player, um, so far this, this looks pretty good to me um, because you literally just grind out and as long as you're winning or dealing enough damage in a lot of your games, you're just gonna get these missions done um, and that's gonna keep going up for the weekly challenge and then you're gonna get, you know, let's, let's say even midway, right? Two booster packs, 200 pink crystals, which could potentially buy you a full card in the card store and then six of these black crystals for um, a draft. So actually really quickly, how much does a draft cost? Oh, right. This got, yeah, this was the bugged one. Um, let me resign this. Okay. Oh, well, I got some rewards for literally not playing a single game because it was bugged out. Oh, okay. So five black crystals uh, with the premium rewards to play. And I believe you get a free draft every day, right? Select your word, blah, 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 try to win as many battles. If you defeat it three times, you run well. And draft, draft is actually really fun too. Um, and it's a good way to learn the new cards. So like, uh, I'm a huge drafter. I always have been since Magic the Gathering. Um, so if you like that format, I would encourage you to do it when you first start because you actually get to ch pick and choose from cards that are not in your collection. You won't keep the cards, but you get all the rewards. Um, from what however much you place so uh, maybe do a little research before you dive in but like it's a good way to to really learn what cards are good and what which ones are not um, that you can then maybe craft later so this is the mission system right so plenty to do we've got a daily logging bonus we've got our daily skulls and then we've got daily missions and a weekly chest i i feel like this is just Although it looks visually like a lot, it's basically just a bunch of different ways of getting free stuff. So for free-to-play players, this feels like they're really trying to, you know, really help people get into the game without too much of a barrier to entry. So, sorry, already tried uh, starting my <laughs> Ultramarines run here because I had some cards left that I wanted to do. So why don't we actually go to, well, so basically, I, I would start here, right? And so... Uh, Uriel, I'd be claiming him um, and getting the starter deck with him. Um, and then if I upgraded to premium, I could unlock that. And premium, here we go. Buy this premium campaign to receive 200 campaign points for this army in the daily login bonus every day forever. Okay, so you're getting uh, just some free campaign points, additional rewards in your chosen army campaign, right? So like you would get a legendary wild card on the first node, which is pretty significant, I would say. And then immediate access to all premium rewards for campaign nodes you have already unlocked. $20. Is this a, is this a month or just a one-time thing? Um, unclear. Unclear. It doesn't say like subscription, so I'm assuming you're just... And then it's the same for each faction. They do the same thing. So... You know, uh, going in, you're still going to get things at every node, but if you go premium, uh, you can get more things, right? So I would get a booster pack with the 300 challenge points and an epic wild card. So um, I still think this is st fairly free-to-play friendly, but clearly they have another pathway where you could probably hit a collection faster if you're going premium or buying, you know, gold for, for maxing out your packs. Um, but again, it just feels like, so you're getting these points from your missions and then you get to spend them how you want to. And there's this like really huge tree for every faction, which is kind of cool, like seeing how far you can get. Um, so then if you're like, you know what? I really need point blank. That's a card I'm really looking for. Or Octavia Infiltrator, which is an excellent, excellent card for the Ultramarines. Um, okay, you know, that's, that's what I'm going to go for. Um, so it's just, a, it's just another way. I forget what I was progressing towards. I wanted the crystals because I wanted to craft some stuff. I guess I was thinking about maybe going here. So uh, let's, uh, let's use our points here. Okay. So we got all of this. Sweet. Um, obviously, these are all commons, but we, we got our rare here. And then uh, when I get some more challenge points, I can get to these 400 crystals, which is nothing to sneeze at. And then after that, uh, we can get... A four random cards and an indomitable ultramarines title and if i had premium i get the sick avatar so um yeah so obviously if you want to spend money awesome i think this game's going to be excellent um and i would definitely support it uh, i tend to do free-to-play stuff if you know me 
Um, sometimes I've, I've spent like a little bit of money here and there because I do want to support the games and I feel like the value is there. Um, but I'm definitely not a player that typically spends money and it just feels like you've got so many ways not to. So essentially, again, just to, to sort of summarize these because it is big systems, you're getting these challenge points and then some crystals here from playing the game and then you're able to spend those challenge points in your campaign to just get a bunch of different free rewards and you get to choose your tracks, right? So let's say you've already got the Primaris Chaplain, right? You're good to go. You do not have Primaris Impul Impulsor, which is like an excellent card because you're usually playing this, then you get a free uh, soldier out of it and soldiers after that because of the codex. Um, then you go for that. Or maybe you really want to rush Lieutenant Calcius for an aggressive Uriel deck. Um, and then obviously it's the same thing with Orcs. Now, I would say if you go back to some of my videos, you'll see what cards I'm running. You can go into the official Discord and ask what ca which cards and which builds people are running. I get that if you look at this as a new player, you're going to be like, what the hell do I even go for, right? Um, and you can switch between the factions. It's kind of cool. It shows your progress. Um, you know, what do I even go for? Uh, but, you know, from, from playing the game, I know that Tyranid Warrior is an excellent card because of Synapse. I know that uh, Hyper Adaptation is probably a card I would want in a Synapse deck. I know that Spore Assist is generally good in Tyranids because one of their defensive cards uh, allows you to play it on turn one. So, so there is this, this knowledge that I have from playing the game, obviously in the alpha, where I can say, you know what, these are cards that I'm gunning for. Um, and I'll do my best uh, to maybe try and get some of that content on the channel, maybe either through just deckless discussion, card discussion. Uh, I kind of love doing that stuff anyway. So um, let me know in the comments if you could use like like either whether it's deck guides or um, like, hey, Tim, can you just review all the Tyranid cards and tell me, you know, what I might want to go for or what I might not. I think when you're playing the game, you guys will figure this out pretty quick. Definitely don't need, to, need me to tell you, and I am not an expert, um, but I played the game enough where I can tell you baseline on a card stat-wise um, and some of the synergies, is this card something you would want in your in your deck for the, for the most part. So uh, that is what we've got for the campaign system. So it's just you get these campaign points, you can utilize them. They get you wild cards, they get you crystals, they get you packs, they get you uh, individual cards. So you get quite a lot of value, you get some nice cosmetics, so maybe you're... A Tyranid fan, you're looking for this avatar, sweet, um, looks terrifying. Also this card pack. <laughs> Tyranid stuff is always really creepy, but very cool. Um, or Orcs, which are kind of a pet favorite of mine. This is a, a fun card. So, yeah, uh, it's, it's cool to be able to look through these and kind of see what you might want. Um, so there's just a lot of individuation in the system. And I think at first it's overwhelming, but I think it's really nice that you can kind of choose your own campaign path so to speak okay sorry let me let me bring this back to the start what the heck is the forge and this is an interesting take on like sort of crafting but sort of not so uh how do i best demonstrate this to you guys let me go to my collection cards okay here we go and i'm just gonna do this so you guys can see it um okay for instance <laughs> As you can see here, I have 19 scouts. Um, you know, when you don't have a duplicate protection, which we did not in the alpha, I'm, I now try and get some info on that moving forward, but I, I don't know that we have that moving forward. Um, yeah, 12 of the firstborn, right? 16. And, okay. Uh, firstborn, let's let's upgrade a card I play. Primaris Reaver I, I actually like quite a bit. Um, all right, so... It's got this like little graphic that's going on. I think it's so the the forge is basically like you spend crystals and and duplicate cards to make a cosmetically cooler version of the card that your I think your opponent sees. I'm sort of confused on on the graphics still. Um, I th I think hold on. Let me just go back to. Sorry, folks. I think it actually says. Okay. Upgrade cards in your collection to progress through the Forge track for each army and earn great rewards. So that's that's kind of the second part. Um, does it actually say it when you try to Forge cards? Let's see. Let's go down to Primaris River. There we go. Yeah. Upgrade cards to improve their aspect, which I think is their aesthetic, and progress through your army's Forge. It will spend duplicates of the card. 
and you will obtain, so it actually, it tells you exactly how many forge points you would get. So if we pop back over to forge here, right? So it's like you're starting out, um, you're gonna get high factory, which is a defense card. And I'm pretty sure the only way right now to get um, offensive defense cards is through, um, through the forge track. And this is something that is in my previous video, so feel free to check that out. Um, but obviously it's like, you wanna have more options. So, uh, so you start out here and then you have a certain amount of points. I don't know if it's exactly, right, we're at 450. Okay, so for 450 forge points, we've gotten, and this is not a premium thing. This is literally access for every player. Um, we've gotten a defense card, an epic wild card, a booster, another, uh, an offense card, so one defense, one offense, another epic wild card, two boosters for 450 forge points. And this goes far, right? We're getting gold, we're getting a legendary, um, we're getting ultramarine, you know, some, some other epic cards, another legendary, some draft tokens. Um, and I think it goes all the way, sorry for my scrolling, goes all the way up to 50 where you get a cool card back. I think we have it because we we're in the alpha, luckily enough. And then 400 gold. So, um, it's, it's interesting, right? It's like an interesting take on how to sort of combine like duplicates and cosmetics, but also be progressing. And the forge gives you really excellent rewards. So this is very worth it. So let's, let's do it. Let's upgrade our Primaris Reaver. Now, apparently it's supposed to look cool. And if I want to upgrade it to level two, and I guess you can keep kind of upgrading them as long as you've got, uh, you know, duplicates of it. Uh, then you get more and more forge points, but it does cost you more crystals. So let's check out our forge. And I love that it has the notification system. As someone who is traumatized by notifications, but also loves them because they let you know what's going on. So here, now I can claim these draft tokens. Boom. And we progress in the forge, and then the next thing is the epic wild card. And these wild cards, oh, they're just, they're so good. Like... I was, I was just hoping for wild cards um, in the game for quite a while because I was missing these sort of key components. Um, and so these wild cards go a long way. And maybe I can also do a little video on um, what wild cards, you know, are worth spending on. Um, but you get so many different things for the orcs, right? You're going to start with uh, a defense card, an offense card. You're going to get some boosters, uh, get some other... Yeah, it's, it looks like it's mostly boosters and wild cards for the for the most part. But then get another defense card, which is sweet. Extractor rig. I, I'm kind of excited to see if this makes vehicles any good. Um, so that's really it. So, so like in summation, you can get crystals, which allow you to upgrade cards, which allows you to progress in the forge. So there are these two kind of parallel progression systems. You've got campaign right, which takes challenge points, which is a different currency that you're getting from your missions, right, and you're getting from your daily skulls, and, um, no, 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 you're, and then you're contributing to your weekly goals here, and then parallel to that, you've got the forge, where you can take the duplicate cards that you're getting, potentially from the random cards in the campaign, potentially from the packs that you're opening, and then you can upgrade those to progress your forge track, to, in my opinion, not only boost your collection, but really focus on some of the more powerful cards to really tune your decks towards where they should be. Um, so I think that is it. Um, I'm really sorry if I missed anything. Uh, please feel free to ask any questions in the comments. There's a lot going on here, but my general two cents closing thoughts take here is that we've got a bunch of ways for free to play players to make progress. Some of it is, is going to be easier if you are winning more, of course. You're going to get more crystals. You're going to get more of the daily skulls in general if you're winning more, which allows you to complete, um, you know, more forge things because you've got more crystals. But these, the campaign points are giving you a bunch of rewards. And then the forge is kind of the, the like, sort of end-all, be-all of, like, really concentrating on, like, the most important cards for your faction. Um, and I just love that they have these little trackers and you can kind of see how far you're going. Um, it's almost like, you know, okay, my orc campaign, I'm, you know, pretty far along or like my ultramarines campaign, I'm just starting. Um, honestly, visually, the more I look at it, the more I like it. Um, initially, I was like, what the heck is going on? And I think that's a fair <laughs> response for the community. 
Um, but I do think that there's plenty, plenty here for free-to-play players. Um, and I think, obviously, there's plenty if you want to drop some money on gold. Um, I believe there were even, like, pre-sale codes to get, like, these, you know, like, $500, $200 starter packs. Um, I think there's, there's plenty of stuff. Uh, to spend your money on. I love these these cool little card backs. Um, and, you know, if you've got 19 scout cards like me, you can start upgrading them. <laughs> um, you only get 10, 10 forge points, but, you know, whatever. You're going to trick out your deck and eventually get those uh, forge cards that you need. Um, so, yeah, that's it today. Um, I know it's a lot. I hope I was able to kind of give you all a sense of what it's looking at also i would recommend uh one smart cat who covered this game quite a lot when it was out turn me on to it they also have a video up so feel free to check them out uh they're definitely a good friend um in the card game community so um other than that uh next steps what are we doing so we've covered the offense defense cards we've generally covered how this is looking it is gonna be on steam within three days um, and though, although I'll be away, I'll definitely try and get some content coming soon. Probably just about my beginning journey. Um, no, no surprise probably to some folks. I'm probably going to start with Ultramarines. I just think it's they're they're one of my favorite um, to start with, so I probably will. Uh, but also, I, I love the Orcs too. So who knows? Um, but whichever faction you start with, I really encourage you guys to give this game a shot. I think there's a lot of promise. For free-to-play players, I think there's plenty to spend your money on that is, uh, you know, I would say relatively worthwhile and, like, will get you deep in the game pretty quickly. Um, but just enjoy learning it. I think it's a really interesting take on the card game format, um, and I am just beyond excited for this game to be released and to get more players and just to really, um, even just ranked ladder. I'm, st I, I'm, I'm a sucker for ranked ladder, so... Uh, thanks so much, as always, for sticking with me, and I will catch you guys next time.